my friend Jonathan Anderson. He is a missionary in Mexico. Uh, been there for the last 12 years. God's been good. Uh, Jonathan, almost all of your kids were born in Mexico. Um, I think four of the five, you said your son was only, what, eight months when you when he left? Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, they all grew up there. So let's talk, if we could today, uh, raising your family on the mission field. Um, maybe we talk about the home. Maybe we talk about, um, and obviously in that, you helped your kids maybe to adapt to Mexico instead of, um, this is a, you know, this is not home, your kids. I mean, I've been with your kids. Um, everything from uh, playing soccer with their friends in the, in the neighborhood, in the park, uh, to being with their friends at church. They love it there. Um, and that could be something that naturally came. I think, obviously, God used you and your wife to help your kids. And sometimes that's difficult, you know. Um, how can I help my kids get involved or learn the language? Or and sometimes we stress as parents over that. So let's start that way, and then let's go into general, um, just the, the home and helping and loving our family, uh, leading them right. And so uh, maybe you can start right there with the, you got to Mexico, um, you only have one son at the moment. And then over time, you have your other children. Uh, How did you involve them in church? How did you involve them in culture? How did you help them not think that their home was back, you know, north of them in the United States, but right where God had you? Sure thing. What a blessing it is to be here with you guys today. Um, For those that are listening, those that are watching, uh, it is a blessing to serve the Lord. And, you know, there's something special about being able to, have your family alongside you when you do that. And, you know, for, for our family, we, we really looked at it that way, like this is going to be a lot of fun. We get to serve the Lord together. And so we've always tried to push that mentality uh, in, our, in our home that this is fun and this is a blessing. Uh, and so I, I believe that you as the leader of your home, you have a lot to do with that. And if you're not careful... Your, your attitudes, your negative attitudes can definitely take your children in the wrong direction, your wife in the wrong direction for that matter. And so I believe that, you know, as we, as we are, you know, tr- tr- taking our family over to a whole new country, new food, new culture, everything, you know, there, our children honestly grew up because they were so young, we didn't really need them to adapt a whole lot. Um, but it was more like we want them to see the mission field, see Mexico in a good light. So even though there are bad things that happen, negative things that happen, things that maybe are not as fun, I mean, there's like speed bumps every stinking 30 seconds. But, um, <laughs> but you know, so you, you obviously could complain about a lot of different things, but to be able to give them the, 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 the positive, I think is so important. And, you know, little things like we, I mean, we talk up tacos. I mean, I think they're pretty awesome. I don't know if they are that awesome, but we talk them up. Like we we are we are always telling our children we're going to get tacos. Man, we have a, you know people come to visit us. They're going to get to try the real tacos, you know. And and we make they are them, pretty awesome. I may they, say. They, I, I think yeah. I visited like four days and went to like eight <laughs> restaurants eating taco like and, and food trucks as well. We had you got good ones. Yeah, they're pretty good. And so to be able to invite people into our world and into what we are doing. That helps our children to be able to say, yeah, yeah, you guys come and see what we're doing and see what we get to enjoy. And that really encourages our children. So, you know, I, I catch Victor talking to people in mission teams that come down. You know, they'll come down and, and Victor's like, yeah, yeah, we're going to go to this taco place. We're going to take you over here too. And <laughs> we're going over here to this church. You're going to get to meet these people. And, nice. and he, you know, so I think it has a lot to do with you as a, as a mom and dad to be able to encourage your children to, to see that side of it. And, and not let the devil get in there because he obviously would, would love to do that in your children's mm-hmm. lives. So, yeah, I, I think uh, for us it was just a matter of being positive, you know, uh, talking about different things that, that would encourage your children that way, keeping them involved. Victor and Ryan both uh, are two boys. They, they, they've mentioned several times to me about wanting to, to preach and teach, and Victor's gotten up a few times and given messages now, Good. and he's yeah. excited about that. Good. and. You know, hey, Dad, I've got no sermon. Dad, I've got no... Ryan's telling me, hey, Dad, I'm studying this sermon. Will you help me study this sermon? And, you know, it's not that we've been pushed it on them. They just they just watch me day in and day out, week in and week out, do the ministry, be excited about it, and not go home and turn off from it and say, yeah. okay, that's over with. But to honestly have that desire and that heart 24-7 to love people, to minister to people. 
and it really does end up affecting your children. Yeah. You know, uh, I remember a couple different times, uh, Jonathan, probably several, but I, I specifically have in my mind two different pictures um, that you've texted me at different times um, and said, hey, I, I'm, I'm here with Victor, taking him out uh, for his birthday. Uh, we're out at lunch. I remember one other time, I think, it was, I don't know if it was Emma or if it was Skyla, and you sent me a picture and said, uh, we're out on a date. And I think that's so important, little bitty things. What are some of the things that you do with the kids? Maybe your wife and you, or maybe just you as dad, um, maybe some special things, maybe some everyday things. What are some things that you do with the kids to, to help them? Sure. You know, what we'll do is uh, we have a family day, so we take off every Tuesday. You know, I was talking to a pastor friend the other day, and he, and he said, you know, I'm just so busy. We've got a lot going on. And, and I said, I, I said, I, I hear you. I said, there's always something to do. There's sure. always something pulling us towards get, getting something done. And I said, but you think about it this way. I said, we're training up families and helping families to understand what a Christian family yeah. looks like. And I said, so why, when we take that day off on Tuesday for us, we actually are very bold about it. We're like, hey, Tuesday's our day off. We're going to be doing something as a family. And so if somebody texts us, they're like, hey, um, hate to bother you today. Uh, I know you're off today, but wanted to just mention this to you. And so it's, it's actually giving them that example of, hey, it's, you have to slow down. You have to take time for your family. You have to make sure your family's important. And we do the same thing with our, our, our marriage, take her out, my wife on a date every week and, and things like that. And our children watch all that. They, 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 you know, if you put your wife and your children on your schedule, sure. then they realize they're important. And, and I think, it, you know, some of us are scared to say, I'm going to put my wife on my schedule. I mean, that's my work schedule. But honestly, whatever is important to me goes on my schedule yeah. at the end of the day. You know? Yeah, I think I read one book said one of the best things you could do for your children is to love their mom, you know, your wife. And uh, mm-hmm. and praise the Lord, you, you know, your relationship, uh, mom and dad, those that are listening, the relationship you have in your marriage, um, it, it's... Kids notice a lot more than we think, right? They've got a lot bigger ears, per se, uh, than we think they do. You know, they can feel uh, the tense, you know, situation or whatever. They know if we're arguing. Now, don't, don't do that in front of them. Um, take it to the back room, a disagreement. But they know those different things, you know, and, and, and you do need a strong relationship. Um, Jonathan, what are some of the other ways that maybe you've helped them um, feel like they belong in the ministry, or in life, uh, in your every day-to-day, in and out? Sure. You know, one of the things we'll do is we don't try to separate the ministry from from our family. We try to do it as a family, and so there are times where I'm going to be going to a class, and, you know, my, my wife is staying back with the kids, but but a lot of times I'll say, hey, Victor Ryan, come with me. You know, let's go do this together. Let's go set up the chairs and, and you know, get them involved that way because— mm-hmm. You want them to feel as though they are becoming part sure. of the ministry. So we definitely do that. Uh, our children, you know, I'll take the children out. We'll go soul winning together, and we'll just in, hand out invitations together right. and take a selfie together and make it exciting and then finish and go get an ice cream. And, you know, so all of those kind of things make your children feel like they're part of what you're doing. Uh, I, I, think, I think it's important for your wife to feel that she's important and, and part of what you're doing. She needs to find her place and and all that God's doing with your family in the ministry. It's not just your ministry, and she's kind of hanging yeah, out amen. on the side. That's good. So that's something she needs to feel part of it. She needs to feel like she is is, is part of what you're doing, and so mm-hmm. she's not just hanging out on the side supporting your ministry, sure. but she is doing it with you. And, and allow me to say, you know, um, ministry is like uh, eating a bowl of rice. You know, you you try to get a lot knocked out, and it seems like the rice is all there. You're like, did I even make any dent in this? You know, and so if we don't stop, and make time for our family. If we don't stop, and uh, I mean, there'll always be something to do. Yep. I mean, that will always consume your time if you don't wrap it up and finish. And I realize there's, you know, circumstances that someone calls, and and I know all that. But if you don't make time, if we don't make time for our kids now, um, they might not make time for us later. And uh, you know, time just gets away from us oh so quickly. And uh, realize that, as Jonathan said, put it on the calendar, put it on the schedule. Say, I'm not a calendar guy or, you know, I'm not asking you send your wife, a, you know, a calendar <laughs> invite. You know, I mean, you might, you might not, depending on your personality. <laughs> Nevertheless, in your mind or on your to-do list or something, make time for your wife, make time for your family yes, because right. time goes by. Take it from a, uh, my third daughter's about to get married and uh, take it from a, a gray-headed fellow who would be like, Lord have mercy, I blinked and they're grown up, you know, like, where did it go? Take time for your family. And a lot of my 
beautiful memories and uh, we're still making them. We still got kids at home, but um, you know, I remember different things that we did and, and I thank God that we did them because if not, all I would have was a memory of time's gone and they're growing up. Make time. I remember one of the uh, activities that kind of went into our schedule, uh, Jonathan, is every day, this was probably on our second term, every day in our schedule, I would go off, I'd preach at the radio from 8 to 9 a.m., I'd get there early, I'd study, I'd read my Bible on my motorcycle, I'd preach from 8 to 9, I'd leave from there, I'd go to a, a coffee shop, I'd get my double espresso with cream, and I would stay there, I'd study a little while, um, I would go do some visits. At noon, I would go and I would eat lunch. And I would say, by the way, everybody needs to have at least one meal a day with your family. Yeah. There's something about eating that Jesus did with his disciples, that yeah. we do fellowship at church. There's something about eating and friends, right? Mm-hmm. And so uh, ours was lunch. It wasn't mm-hmm. supper. It was lunch. And so, and it wasn't even breakfast, but whatever works for you. But lunch, I would go home and uh, we would eat and then we'd all go out on a walk. And uh, my wife and I would go out on a walk. We'd walk with the kids. It let my wife, um, you know, she'd been up in the house with the kids all day. She mm-hmm. needed to get out. She needed to talk to me. And if I was staying at home with my computer on my lap or my phone in my hand, I'd be distracted and I wouldn't yeah. listen. So I need to get out. It helped sure. exercise. It helped us to get out. Kids need to run around. And, uh, and then after lunch, We'd have another hour, and then I would leave. I'd go back to the coffee shop, another double espresso with cream uh, <laughs> and you know croissant, and then I would go to Bible college for the evening. And that was our routine. That routine gave us time together. Yes. And uh, yes, yes. so, what were some of the routines, maybe that 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 y'all used, and maybe we'll give ideas to our friends that they have to figure those routines of meals or fun times with the family. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, and, and we're, we're here talking to our missionary friends and, and people and, I, I, you know, they're in the work, doing the work. You know, I think one of the things you have to do is you have to set your you have to set your limits because, you know, like like Jeff saying, he, he wasn't working from sun up to sundown. He took a break in the middle, at least. And I think that's important because, you know, if we're not careful as missionaries, we wake up, we turn on, we got to be, you know, doing the work. And then when then we just are always busy throughout the day and then then here we come home at night, you know, 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night sometimes, and our and our wife's just like, I don't even know you anymore, you know. You have no clue who I am. And yeah. so, you know, being able to break it down some, you know, not just a day off like we do on Tuesdays, but to be able to say, like you said, come home for lunch, and your wife's looking forward to that. She's fixing it, and she's waiting for you to come home, and, and it's important to her. It's important to the kids. It's important to you. And so, yeah, we do that, and I think that's important because if you don't, if you don't break your day down, you don't break yeah. your week down, you're going to find yourself – in a bad place where you yeah. are, you know, your wife is is saying, you don't know what's going on with me. You've not heard me out. Uh, the children have stuff going on. I know what's going on with the kids. They're going through stuff. You have a, no clue about it. Yeah. And so being able to just bring it all together, keep that family unit yeah, close, amen. I think is such a huge thing. And that's, you know, whether it be you take your children out for their birthdays when that comes up or just having a, a time where you just see one of your children struggling, you know, frustrated with something. Yeah. And you're able to lean into that with them, take them out and talk to them some. These are just things that yeah, you must do. Yeah. Amen. Make time for your family, right? You know, um, we need time to rest. We need time to, you know, even God made time to rest, yeah. right? And yeah. he's a, a God who never sleeps nor slumbers. Yet he probably wasn't doing that to he needed the rest. He's showing us a pattern, right? And 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 we need that rest. Let's not be silly and think, and that would even be with our family. Um, and by the way, um, those that are listening, friends that are listening, make time, uh, especially at night, go to bed the same time as your, your spouse. That's a good thing. Um, put your kids down, you know, and I realize not every night, you know, you might be away. I understand that, but, um, pray with your kids before you go to bed or tuck them in, you know, have them in your room, jump on the bed and pray with them. Something you need, something steady in their life so they could say, you know, growing up, this is what we did, you know, and th- those are important things. Those are the, um, the foundational things. Time's going to go by quick. Make sure we do things that, that they remember things that, uh, that are, are worthy investments. Well, I appreciate your time today, Jonathan. Um, God bless you greatly, uh, you and your sweet family. And thank you friends for listening, for watching. I pray that God blesses you. Uh, make time the priority. We could all say God, family, you know, and then, and we could all put that, but we don't all live by that. And may that be our, our life, not just, 
you know, um, it's easier to preach 10 sermons than it is to live one sermon, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> we could all preach those like, well, I would say, you know, mm. and it sounds good and you got the poem at the end. Nevertheless, are we living that? Amen. Right. And so yeah. may our, our yeah. mouth and our feet be pointing in the same direction. So, Amen. uh, Thank you, Jonathan, for speaking about the family, the importance of the home. And uh, thank you, friends, for listening, watching. God bless you greatly.